everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about two of my least favourite things. Fundamentalist Christians and anti-feminists. How is that even a thing? Misogynists. Let's just call them what they are. Today we are going to be looking at an Instagram account that one of you lovely lot um, kind of made me aware of on Instagram. You tagged me in one of their posts and I was like, Oh my god, I am so making a video about this. The Instagram account um, is run by a guy who calls himself Yogi Oops, I think that is. He describes himself as a motivational speaker, which is always a good start, who says that he mainly teaches women how to behave and inspires men to be manly. We already know this is right up my alley. <laughs> he also uh, says that he is the creator of anti-feminist apparel, which is a clothing brand who... <laughs> clothing brand? <laughs> which features designs such as I heart gender roles, I heart patriarchy, and um, I don't need to see your butt on Instagram, which is ironic because on Instagram is the only place this guy is ever going to see a butt in his life, let's be honest. I genuinely kind of worry and wonder if the people who are in these stock photos that he's just like photoshopped his designs onto have any idea what they're being used for and I feel really really sorry for them. I do find it quite funny as well that he created a feminism is cancer design. You can't call these designs, they're just bits of text. The printers that he uses actually banned this and refused to print it or post out any of these products because, um, well, let me just read what he says. All feminism is cancer t-shirts and mugs are now banned. <laughs> and so in protest, he said, use discount code feminism is definitely cancer if you wanted one of these items as a gift for the inconvenience. It will give you 10% of anything else you buy. Our print provider informed me that this message con constitutes hate speech. This is funny because apparel that says smash the patriarchy is not hate speech today. Sexist much? No, not sexist, because one is saying, let's remove oppressive systems. The other is saying, equality is the equivalent of a disease that's gonna kill us all. So that's his, that's his clothing brand. I mean, everything is gonna be in like little air quotes today because that's how ridiculous all of this is. This may not come as a surprise to a lot of you, but this man is a fan of the transformed wife. His first post on Instagram, or one of his first posts at least, features a photo of him thoughtfully reading The Power of a Transformed Wife by Laurie Alexander herself, The Transformed Wife. It's her book. I've read parts of it. Ooh, it's interesting. I'm gonna get my hands on a copy to do a review at some point. I've been meaning to for a while. Prepare yourself for that. His caption for this post reads, I am reading The Power of a Transformed Wife, a book that is very much hated by feminazis and is littered by one-star reviews by people who have never read the book. Kind of like my podcast right now. <laughs> it's so funny. I love that he's trying to like insult people for kind of like finding his podcast bad. And if in the face of criticism, all you can do is throw stupid names like feminazi at people, maybe they have some valid criticism. I don't know, I've not actually read the reviews for his podcast. Maybe he's right, probably not. So he's like, it's littered with one star reviews by people who have never read the book. That means it's going to be good. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> this book teaches you how to be a good wife and it's helping me figure out how my future wife should behave lest I have to discipline her. <laughs> good joke, mate, with posts like this, no one's gonna wanna marry you. Sorry, sorry, let me correct myself. No one sane is gonna want to marry you. It's a must read for all women, including young girls who want to get married instead of posting pictures of their butt on Instagram. He really has an issue with that, doesn't he? And for men who are dabbling with the red pill but still want companionship one day. <laughs> I'll post a video review on my channel when I'm done reading it. I haven't actually seen his YouTube channel but now I'm incredibly keen to. It's so funny, I watched a few of his like stories and stuff on Instagram, like the videos that he posts on there on his stories, I'm repeating myself. Um, and so much of it is just like, oh my god, the Indian feminists are coming after me now. The German feminists are coming after me. Oh, these damn feminists. Everyone's reported my account and I can't even go live to do a Q&A with you guys. I am so oppressed. Normally I try and stay as like fair and nice in my videos as possible, but occasionally you just come across people like this who are just clearly so messed up and hateful and I struggle to 
see any good in him and what he's doing that I'm like, you know what, screw it. Let's just have some fun and, and mock his views a little bit. Not mock him as such, but definitely his beliefs because in this case, they're messed up. Let's look at a few more posts in uh, some more detail. The sign of a quality intellectual is that they quote themselves on Instagram. For example, here he quotes himself, feminine women like being possessed by a strong man. Now I don't quite get this obsession with like feminine women. It seems to be a thing. It's like you're not, not a real woman unless you're feminine, which we all know is absolute crap. But here's the thing. I, I do actually count myself as quite a feminine woman, you know? I like my girly clothes, I like my pretty dresses, I like my makeup. You know, if we're gonna go in terms of appearance and also in how I act in a lot of ways, um, yeah, sometimes maybe I'm a little more towards the masculine side, but on the whole, I would define myself as feminine. Weirdly though, I don't see myself as a possession. So maybe this guy's wrong. Um, here he posts, God, this is such an inspirational photo. I just, I can't get over this. Um, have you seen a more perfect man? Look at him, average looks, average body, but the way he's staring so intently at the camera. Oh, that's a real man right there. Look how angry he looks. He's not gonna listen to any women. He's not gonna treat women as a human. That's how you know he's a real man. And that, oh, the t-shirt, look at it my wallet, my choice, as he's there holding his wallet. It's poetic, absolutely poetic. This caption is inspiring. Your body, your choice, my wallet, my choice. <sighs> Gives me goosebumps, you know? If that isn't your dream man, I don't know what is. All joking aside though, he definitely has a point, which is why I also say my wallet, my choice, which is why I won't be spending any of my hard-earned money on a man like this. I will happily spend my hard-earned money on another person if they're nice, they're kind, they treat me like a human being. But I wouldn't spend my money on a misogynistic piece of crap who thinks I can be bought. I don't want his money. I don't want anyone else's money. I also find it funny that his, his little point here of your body, your choice, well, my wallet, my choice, is clearly implying that <laughs> If he's gonna spend any of his money on a woman in any way, somehow her body becomes his possession. Like, what? You expect us all to be prostitutes just selling our body to you for what? You buy us a meal and we're supposed to just give you our body? You, I don't know, take us on a couple of dates that you pay for and suddenly if you get us pregnant we have to do what you want? You know, you're in control of what's in there. Uh, you can use us however you want, you can chop off a limb if you want because hey, you bought us some drinks and now you own our body. I might be sounding hyperbolic, but it's what he's implying. Here again, he quotes himself, the benefits of rejecting motherhood is the biggest lie feminists brainwashed an entire generation with. The benefits of it is the biggest. See, that's weird grammar there. It should be the benefits are the biggest lie or the benefit is the biggest lie. Mate, if you're gonna quote yourself, get your grammar right, you know? I'm not a feminazi, I'm a grammar Nazi. Uh, in his caption, he writes, Darkness comes beneath the dying stars with all the blood and scars. Hashtag abortion is murder. Oh, the poetry. He has this whole thing as well where he's like really into promoting natural childbirth. And this is something that I've been wanting to talk about on video for a while, but um, I'm still doing my research into it. Uh, but it is something that does worry me. So there has been a trend recently of women, particularly in America, particularly fundamentalist Christian women, rejecting hospital or any kind of care during childbirth. There are women who insist on doing it all on their own, at home, without any medical support, without going for scans, without seeing any doctors. And part of it is really dangerous. Someone, like one of my fans, sent me some videos of like home births like this, like natural home births and stuff like that, saying, you know, with these women saying that, oh, it's natural, women have been doing it for thousands of years, of course it's okay, nothing's gonna happen. And then, they, oh, I don't even wanna say this. One of the videos literally showed a woman who, cause she hadn't had any kind of like coaching during the birth, she tried basically like squatting to give birth, which is apparently like quite a good position to do it in, a lot of women do it. But because she hadn't like had any coaching for the birth and she had no one there to support her or anything, 
the, oh god, the video was horrific. She was too high when she squat, and the baby essentially fell. Don't look that video up. So the point is, that's just one of the bad things that can happen. There's a hell of a lot, and if there's complications and there aren't medical professionals there to help, mother and baby can be in danger. I understand what he's saying, that childbirth can be expensive, especially in America. I do think that's a huge issue. I do think that needs to change. But the solution isn't natural childbirth like he says. He says, natural childbirth is how we humans gave birth since our genesis. And it isn't done by laying on your back in a hospital bed. Stop believing the lies and then you will find real empowerment in being yourself. By no means am I an authority on childbirth, but the information is out there and we will return to this discussion soon. And then in the most ridiculous statement, he says, oh, and also maybe think about why the fertility rate is so low here, but it is four times higher in Africa. Maybe we don't have it all figured out in our ivory towers. The fertility rate is so high there because they don't have easy access to contraception or abortion. They have to have kids. That's the issue. We choose not to. This definitely comes from the position of someone who clearly has never had to even think about giving birth himself and never will have to think about that. If you knew what it was like to have a womb and a vagina and something growing inside you, he might reconsider this position. I don't know, maybe not. Um, I don't even want kids and I still think, you know, worst case scenario and I did find myself pregnant but didn't realise it until, you know, months in where the baby was already developed to a point where I wouldn't feel comfortable having an abortion. Um, if I did find myself in that worst case scenario at any point, I know probably not gonna happen, but still. And I did have to go through with the pregnancy. I can't imagine wanting to put myself in danger. It just doesn't make sense in my head. Again, quoting himself, beauty fades, soul doesn't. Which, I'll be honest, is something I can actually get behind, you know? I mean, maybe not the soul thing, but personality, you know? I do think your character and who you are is far more important than how you look on the outside. He is right, beauty fades. The problem is, with people like this, he's ugly on the inside, and that's never gonna get better unless he makes an effort. Here we know he is a quality content creator because he's quoting the transformed wife about how children are not a burden, women. This is what culture wants you to believe. It would be I've actually spoken about, I think, this exact thing in a video before from her original blog post. I'm just, <laughs> he says, they're only a burden if you're irresponsible or trying to emulate men, or you just don't want children. That's not trying to emulate men. Also, what does he think of men who don't want kids? Sometimes you must do the opposite of what she says. <sighs> Um, little improvement there. Always you must do the opposite of what this guy says. The only safe sex is sex within marriage. A pastor at church today said this and I couldn't agree more. There is no escaping the consequence of sex outside marriage. Really? Because I've done it and I don't have any negative consequences from it. I'm not pregnant. I don't have any STDs. I'm not emotionally damaged by it. Seems I escaped the consequences. Pretty sure millions of other people have too. He says, you could use protection and be on the pill, but then you put your mood, brain chemistry, hormones, and even future relationship and your future kids' health at risk by being on the pill. We've been over this before. The pill isn't the only form of contraception. There are other things out there. Also saying you put your future kids' health at risk. That's not an issue for some people because people like me don't want kids. And the chances of like infertility and stuff like that from using contraception, or at least from using most kinds of contraception, are so tiny and small. With something like condoms, it has no impact on whether you can have kids in the future or not at all. So it's just fear mongering. You put your heart, oh God, this is so funny. Sorry, the, the wording of this is hilarious. You put your heart health at risk from repeated breakups after you've created intimate bonds only to break them because your relationship wasn't built on the rock that is God. Heart health. Also, who says you have repeated breakups? I know plenty of people who had sex outside marriage and have still only had one partner. 
Uh, your brain changes and you can no longer pair bond like, oh my god, pair bonding. When are people gonna realize this is a myth? People aren't born with a limited amount of love to give. That's not how it works. If that's how it worked, then, you know, you could say, oh, don't have more than X amount of children because you won't be able to love the later ones. Oh, if you have too many children now, you won't be able to love them in the future. It's not how it works. No one ever says that. And it's exactly the same with partners. You have more options, but aren't as satisfied as the virgin who saved sex until marriage. Again, assuming everyone wants the same thing, assuming satisfied means the same thing to everyone. It's so ridiculous. Uh, you're becoming more and more numb and failed to connect with a worthy man's soul. Your bra brain has been permanently rewired. Again, that bit's crap. <laughs> you think you can replace men with vibrators? You're a lonely cat woman. <laughs> okay, I will never be a lonely cat woman. Dog woman, maybe, but you're never lonely with a dog. Carrie's my bestie. But oh my god, I hate this last point. I hate this, right? Now that any man can open up your lock, you are no longer a woman worth working for because he knows you give it up easily. Your value is going down as a life partner. Women are not commodities with values. Men are not commodities with values. People are not commodities with values. This annoys me. This annoys me so much. And I hate this whole like um, lock and key analogy that they have. Like saying, oh, a key that can open many locks is a master key, but a lock that can be opened by many keys is so stupid. It's worth it. It's stupid. It's so stupid. And also, I'm sorry, but if you have had multiple partners as a woman, that doesn't mean any man can have sex with you. That means you've chosen to have multiple ch partners. It's still your choice. It doesn't mean you have in the past or will in the future choose to just have sex with every single man you meet. You still have a choice. You've still made a choice. You're not just allowing men to open your legs. You're choosing to have consensual sex. You're still in control. It doesn't reduce your worth at all. Whether you've had sex with someone before or not doesn't give them any right to have sex with you again. It's still something you need to agree on together and be okay with together and consent to together and essentially work for together. Just because you've had sex with person A in the past, that doesn't mean person B has a right to come along and say, well, you had sex with him, so you're going to have sex with me now. That's not how it works. In no way does you choosing to be with one person allow other people to value you any more or less. That's not how the world works. Or at least that's not how the world should work, and that's not how decent people view each other. And if you are the kind of man who thinks, oh, this woman is worth less because she chose to have consensual sex with this person, if that's how you view women, and if that's how you see the world, that says a hell of a lot more about you and your flaws and your insecurities than it does about the woman you're talking about. It says, every man must build a fence around his woman so that she cannot escape. If she tries, she promptly learns the repercussions. But most importantly of all, she should never want to leave. Don't forget, men. Women your possessions. Lock them up. Kidnap them. Make sure they can never leave. Punish them if they try to be independent, free-thinking humans. Women don't have brains. If this is what you want, just buy a sex doll. Seriously. Behave, women. Behave. It's your job. I don't only say this, but can we just... Report this Instagram account, please. The best way to improve economic prospects for women is to improve job prospects for the men in their lives, even if that means increasing the so-called pay gap. Phyllis uh, Schlafly? Why does that sound like a fake name? I find it so funny that the man who was complaining earlier, saying, my wallet, my choice, is now saying, oh, women, if you want money, you need to find a man and marry him so he has money. And we're going to give those men more money so that you have more money. Um, but you can only have that money if you marry him and are his possession. It's ridiculous. Just think about all the unemployed single mums and single career women out there right now unable to work. If they were married, they'd at least have some social support being on your own as a woman is not your nature. Pretty sure it's mine. As a single career woman out there right now, 
I think you'll find I'm still doing damn well for myself. I'm still working hard. I'm still loving my life and enjoying it. And I don't need a man to support me. And I'm not gonna end up in some crappy relationship that I don't want just because I'm scared of being alone or I'm scared I'm not gonna have as much money. They're not good reasons to be with a man. And I won't do it. I am more than capable of being on my own and supporting myself. And I'm not gonna give that up for anyone. Here he ends up quoting the Bible with, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. <laughs> and, then, and then he starts talking about clubs, right? So, bad music made by tattooed devil worshippers, overweight women plastered with toxic makeup products, revealing outfits, and of course, alcohol. <laughs> it's a world of sin. <laughs> Continuing on this train of thought, this verse makes clear why women need men more than men need women. <laughs> <laughs> and why it's natural for women to crave the attention of busy, hard-working men. Oh, of a busy, hard-working man. And why men who are too available are a huge turn-off. <laughs> How these behaviours are simply coded in our genes is beyond me. Oh my god. He, th this is written by the kind of man who's like, Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm single because I choose to be, because uh, all these women clearly want me and I'm just... Uh, Try not to show them I'm interested, you know, I'm just I'm gonna let them come to me, I'm gonna let them beg for me. And the truth is, no one wants him, and that's why he's single. And then he looks at someone like me who, like, chooses to be, and he's like, it's because men don't want you, it's because you're too easy, that's what it is. And I'm like, well, I've had people ask me out, and I just want to be on my own for a while. And he's like, no, no, you want men, you need men, you crave men. You're, you're actually really unhappy without a man. I'm like, I'm, I'm not unhappy. He's, no, you're really unhappy without a man. It just, it says, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting carried away now. I'm literally quoting emails that I've got from men who've watched my videos being like, oh, I feel so sorry for you. You must be so unhappy. Just because I've said, yeah, no, I'm pretty happy. It just, it says so much more about their insecurity than it's ever going to say about me and women like me. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> here we go. This is so funny because this just kind of proves my point, right? I am an angry male and I love that about myself. Anyone who doesn't like male anger can burn in hell. <laughs> oh, mate, I'd rather burn in hell than go anywhere near you. Feminine women attract strong masculine men. Feminists attract weak feminine men. I'll be honest, if this guy is the epitome of a strong masculine man like he thinks he is, I'll take a weak feminine man any day. And just like the whole thing, he, he goes on all these like anti-feminist rants. He doesn't call us feminists either, he calls us feminazis. And I don't think he understands that men can and should be feminists. I don't think he understands that feminism, but watch well, him. I think he's one of these people who does understand that feminism is ultimately about equality. Feminism isn't about women saying women are better. It's not about female superiority, not at least proper good feminism shouldn't be. Feminism is about equality for all. We're talking men, women, non-binary, everyone. Equality for everyone. This guy sees that and hates it because he feels threatened by it. It's almost like if he doesn't have these, I guess, societal structures and norms in place telling him he's superior, he somehow feels he's nothing, he's inferior, he's worthless. And we're not saying that. We're just saying gender shouldn't define your position. Your actions and content of your character should. That's what feminism's about. And he's saying, oh no, but because I was born with a penis, that means I'm like meant to be in charge and stuff, yeah? And it's just, it's really pathetic. <sighs> I know I'm kind of like putting words in his mouth at this point, but I'm like, I'm, or it seems like I'm doing that, but I'm just paraphrasing a lot of the other stuff on his account and his profile and places. Yeah, I don't know. This was a weird video. I wanted to do something light and fun and just have a bit of a giggle. I end up getting quite angry and stressed, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what happens sometimes when I don't plan my videos. I literally just took some screenshots and started filming. Um, if you would like me to keep an eye on this account, if you'd like me to find his YouTube channel and his podcast and maybe review that at some point we can do, I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, for all we've kind of had a giggle and silliness in this video, I do want to end on a really, really serious note and uh, talk a little bit about everything that's going on in the world with the absolutely horrific and heartbreaking murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement. 
they are very, very important causes to me and they're something that I feel very, very strongly about and I do not want to stay silent in. However, I don't feel that as a white woman, I am necessarily the best, most educated or experienced person to talk about it. I don't want to just stay silent on my platform, but I don't want to insert my opinion where it's not necessary. That's why I want to try and use my platform to promote, to shout out, to direct you to um, other people who are more educated, who are more experienced, in particular other black creators. I've spoken a little bit about this on Instagram and I do have like a, a sort of saved story on there at the minute of um, a lot of the books that I'm reading at the minute. And I think the first step in how I'm trying to go about talking about this and promoting other creators is that I'm just starting to educate myself. I have a huge collection of books that I'm currently reading and working my way through and making lots of notes on and trying to educate myself on the topic of race and inequality, all written by absolutely fantastic authors, um, all black authors. These include How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, uh, Black Stats by Monique W. Morris, uh, So You Want to Talk About Race by um, Ijeoma Olu, uh, when They Call You a Terrorist, A Black Lives Matter Memoir by Patrice Kahn Cullors and Asha uh, Bandil. White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin D'Angelo. And Between the World and Me by ta Coates. And How to Be Less Stupid About Race by Crystal M. Fleming. Um, this is just my starting point as well, but I'm slowly working my way through these books, making lots of notes. But this is just a starting place. Um, I am going to try and make a video where I talk about these books and what I've learned from them and what I've read about them and promote these creators and some other black content creators as well. This is such an important topic and I don't just want to rush into it while it's trending and just say some stuff for the sake of it. I want to make sure I'm properly educated. I want to make sure I'm properly understanding the issues. I want to make sure I really listen to people's experiences before I talk about anything. And I don't want this to just be a flash in the pan, trending, whatever. I want this to be something that I and others can actually learn from and that we can talk about so that we can make sure real change happens. This isn't just an issue in America, this is happening in the UK as well, this is all over the world. And I think this has kind of highlighted to me how important the issue is. I, it's always kind of like been there in the back of my mind, I've always been slightly aware of it. You know, you, you hear things and you hear people talking um, about like racism and inequality and all this stuff and for someone like me who's never personally dealt with it you know it can be easy to say oh well you know I'm not racist so I'm doing enough but as a lot of these books have started to point out to me that's not enough it's not just a matter of not discriminating yourself it's about being willing to stand up for the people who are discriminated against and are oppressed and say, no, that's not okay. It's about making sure they have their voices heard. And as a white woman with a large platform, I don't want to just shout over them and say, well, here's what I've learned. This is what I think. I want to instead amplify the voices of black creators out there and say, I've got this platform, so go listen to them. That's what I want to try and do. I hope this makes sense. I hope I've said this right. I hope I'm expressing myself right. Yeah, I hope that's okay. But anyway, sorry, I know this was a weird little rant to pop on the end, but I felt it was important. And I don't want you guys to think I'm just staying silent because I don't care or because, I don't know, I don't feel like it's important. I'm just trying to make sure I educate myself. I speak up in the right way. I direct people's attention to the right places and I want to make sure this is an ongoing effort and not just a quick little trending oh look I'm doing my part I, I don't want to be that person does that make sense okay I, ho I hope that's okay um, I'm gonna end this here thank you for watching today appreciate you guys so much uh, please let me know your thoughts on absolutely everything down in the comments below and I'll see you guys again very very soon